Good morning, church. Let's take a collective breath of God's love for us. Deep breath, inhale, Holy Spirit. Thankful for a new day, amen? amen. On this sunshiny day, during our first Sunday of our Lenten journey, we were called that this past Wednesday marked our, uh, inaugurated that time of 40 days uh, with 40 nights with our Lord to be in the spiritual desert in solidarity with Him and His uh, ability to be tempted, but also His ability to trust in the Father and to fulfill His um, His mission, which was to bring salvation as an unblemished lamb to be sacrificed for our sins uh, on Calvary, uh, that he would die, but on the third day he would be raised. Can I get an amen? amen? And so today we continue that journey. I'm not sure if you have made a Lenten sacrifice or working on something that you're not only giving up, but maybe trying to, to do proactively, maybe be more conscientious of others, maybe be more willing to uh, be forgiving of others. So wherever you are, we're just going to fold that into the mass. We're also going to fold into the mass our the need for peace in, in the Ukraine and Russia with Russia. Amen. Amen. We also want to fold into the mass our awareness of over fifty thousand people who were killed as a result of the horrendous earthquakes that took place in Syria and Turkey. Amen. Amen. And also all those who are experiencing unusual weather throughout the world and throughout the country, uh, for God to give them hope and uh, encouragement and resources. There's been a lot of power outages during this time of winter that has gone in a whole other direction. Lastly, we're going to fold in not only your personal prayers and intentions, but we're also going to fold in those who are in the RCIA process, those who actually have journeyed into uh, this RCIA process seeking conversion and seeking to join our Catholic Church by with the Easter sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist. We want to welcome the, our candidates, those who are already baptized and their sponsors, but also the catechumens and their godparents, and those who will be baptized uh, and brought into the sacraments of confirmation and Holy Eucharist as well. Uh, it is a joyous time. Um, they have been preparing upstairs for the consecutive uh, Sundays um, and just really growing, and we'll hear about that from their sponsors but also we're going to send them forth. We're going to pray for them, and then we're going to send them forth to our cathedral, our Mother Church of our Diocese with Bishop John, uh, and they will get a special blessing for the continuation of their conversion and being brought into the full communion back here at St. Peter Clay. So we're going to send them, and he's going to send them back, and they're going to smell even better. Can I get an amen? amen. But let's continue to pray for them in this Mass because they're very special, special people. And uh, we're very blessed to have them uh, as a part of our church, especially as we grow grow into the new church. I'm not going to say go into the new church. I'm going to say we're going to grow into the new church. The little church with big heart getting bigger. So let's please stand and welcome one another. It's the only mass you have today. Let us center ourselves with a prayer to St. Michael. You can find that prayer in the back of your heritage missal, the prayer to St. Michael. Also with us, too, acknowledging that um, uh, we have a new Grand Lady in the Knights and the Lady Auxiliary of St. Peter Clever, so we'll acknowledge our special Valerie at the end of Mass. Let us now pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God reveal. Welcome to St. Peter Clay, where the little church of big heart getting bigger. Amen? Amen. Seven seven seven, victory is mine, and the green hymnal that you all should have and sing along with us. There's some of these in the back. If you'd like to sing with us, you can go 
if I can get one similar. It's seven, 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 victory is mine.
Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated as we give us the sacred scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of God, of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is, the, it is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said. You should not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the trees was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of his fruits and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed big leaves together and made lion cloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful. transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of the justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Rise up. Before we start the gospel, someone left your car running. If you're driving a blue Kia Sportage, your car is still running. Thank you. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with the, with the bands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Then the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, all these I shall give you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, get away, Satan. It is written. The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be seated. God is good? All the time. You know, Lent used to be for me as a child a very painful time. I mean, you have to consider now things that you normally didn't really think about, namely sin. Didn't have to think about it too much, but now you're really thinking about it. You had to give up things. Bye bye, sweets. Or you couldn't do those foolish things that you thought was normal to do. So, Lent growing up as a child could almost seemingly be a painful time or a difficult time. However, there was good in it because it allowed you to start to be more selfless, more concerned about the things that are going on in life that make you appreciate it, and even especially allow you to grow in your dependency and your faith in God. So there's the sweetness, right? It could be bitter, but it could be sweet. Remind ourselves, though, that Lent, there, within Lent, the old the word Lent comes from the word springtime. The word Lent has its tracings back to lengthening of days. In other words, during this Lenten season, it is spring for us who have hope and have the trust in God uh, to depend on Him even more. And then there's beautiful things that can happen in the emergence of spring as the days progressively get longer. And if we do this spiritually, if we depend on God and we trust in God and we seek God, we'll start to have these great graces in our life, these great fruits that God wants us to have. It doesn't mean, though, that there's not old scratch, the tempter, Satan, who wants to challenge your desire to grow closer to God. Amen? So let's just have a little reenactment in a contemporary sense, amen? So, I need, I need a tempter, so come on up. I need a tree. Could you be a tree? Yes. Could you be a big tree? All right. We got caramel delight tree. We got toasty yay tree. Toasty yay tree. And you're gonna be thin mint tree. All right. 
And we need a married couple. So Cecilia and Dr. Joe will be our married couple. All right. Let's give it up for all of them. So far. This couple and this reenactment obviously is more of a spiritual reflection. Amen. Amen. I want you to imagine the love of this couple. Aren't they beautiful? Amen. Amen. They've made their promises, they made their vows, they are open to each other, they're giving fully their love to one another, and they trust one another, and they understand that if it wasn't for God, they wouldn't be here. Amen? Amen. And imagine them having access to everything in the lay of the land, but God said, you just don't need that one thing. You don't need that any cookie from the thin man cookie. <laughs> have every cookie in the whole wide world. You can have the Samoas, the caramel delights. You can have the Taste Jays, but no Thin Mints for you. And imagine you walking along, encouraging each other. Oh, let's try this one. Oh, you're avoiding that one. Nope, nope, nope. And oh, yes, those Taste Jays. Let's try those. Wow. And imagine old Scratch, the tempter, Satan, wants to make sure you get blammo, wants you to think that there is no need to pay attention to rules. There is no reality of a relationship with God that is so contingent on your actions that old scratch comes up and says, hey guys, what y'all doing? <laughs> Aren't all these cookies marvelous? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and you say, and you say, why haven't you? And then you say, we, yeah, we're not, we're not supposed to. <coughs> and then he says, did God really say that? Did God really say that? <laughs> <laughs> and then he lures them over because the devil can't make you do nothing. You know, there's a lie out there. The devil made me. The devil didn't make you do nothing. It's your will, our wills, human will, free will. It's not enslaved will. It's free will. He just gives you a nice, deceptive, luring challenge to question. I think that every time we get tempted, we should say, not, devil, yeah, well, you're trying to make me do this, aren't you? Because the devil being like, you don't have to rely on God. You can rely on yourself. And so imagine old Scratch saying, check this out. And he pulled out one of those. Check these out. And, they, and he says, you won't die from it. There's no problems with it. There's less power. <laughs> and then, the, then so there's this desire to consume something that they really now have questioned. So you and I do one another, you want to try this? Okay. So you gobble, gobble, gobble. Ready? Just take some in. Ready? Mm, mm, mm. Those opinions for real were the bottom. All right. But what happens in that very moment is that they got too smart, too quick, amen? They got too much, too fast, and in fact, they were given this fulfillment that will ever be fulfilled. Because the truth is, our fulfillment, brothers and sisters, is trusting in the Lord. Our, just, our fulfillment of being the best human being is to be the best creature of God. And when we're the best creature of God, we can have no shame, amen? What happened in the story? They ate from the forbidden tree, and all of a sudden, the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, and they realized too much. They realized that they were naked. Oh, snap. When really it was, hey, it's your birthday suit, right? Back in the day days, it was all good. Now it's like, oh, snap. Right? And so here, here's this moment where there's, their blessedness becomes shameful. Right? Their goodness becomes marred. And they don't understand that goodness that God had intended for them. Now they're questioning. Now they're wondering. Now they're scrupulous. 
Now they don't know for sure. Is this God? Does God? Maybe God's hiding something from us. We got to try this for ourselves now. And that's the beginning of what pride. Pride begets the fall. And so we understand that Satan ultimately was probably going. <laughs> And then they ultimately hid. And then what did God have to do? He had to come in and say, where are you? Of course, he knew where they were. <laughs> but they said, we hid because we were ashamed. <laughs> and then ultimately, we know the, the, the rotten fruit of this experience was, we're now we're all going to suffer. We're all going to have to work for our food. We're all going to have, women are going to have enmity with Satan, the, the serpent. There's going to be pain when there's going to be a child. There's going to be all of these things that are a reflection of the fall. And you can check that in Genesis. Amen? Let's give it up for our helpers. Please keep the cookies. I don't need no more temptation. <laughs> Ultimately, brothers and sisters, our lives during this season of Lent can be full of of joy and hope. They can be. If we turn to the Lord first. Don't turn to the Lord last. Uh-oh, Lord, I'm sorry I messed up. What if we were more proactive in our faith and even were able to call out Satan? What I love about the, the temptation and desert experiences of Jesus was, one, he knew the word of God. You knew he, Jesus knew himself. Can I get an Amen. When you're in a spiritual desert, you must know yourself. Somebody turn to yourself. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to know yourself. <laughs> turn to your other neighbor and say, you got to know yourself. <laughs> you got to know your strengths. You got to know your weaknesses. You got to know your abilities. You got to know your inabilities. You've just got to know yourself. Because when you're in a desert, there's not much to do. You've got to reflect on yourself and understand yourself. Okay? When you know yourself, you're going to be able to clearly see where, you, where old scratch is going to try to get at you. Amen? If, if you're an impatient person, Satan will go at your impatience. Amen? If you're a greedy person, Satan will say, you don't have this. You don't have this. If you're an unforgiving person, Satan will be like, oh yeah, that, one's, that, one, that person deserves not to be forgiven either. Right? So what Satan does, he goes in at your places where you're trying to grow in God's grace. And he will try to sneak in there and say, you don't really need God. You can handle this for yourself. So that's why it's important to know yourself. The second thing that's important to do, church, is to know God. You have to be willing to know God. And just because you've known him in the past and you've known his voice, doesn't mean that you know him right now. Amen? I mean, check out Adam and Eve. They knew God from the beginning, you know, as, as they were created. They got to know him personally. But it didn't mean that they weren't vulnerable. It didn't mean that they weren't um, weakened uh, in their human nature. So here's this moment where you can know God and know God's voice and know God's word. As Jesus says, no man shall live by bread alone. Right? Jesus knew he was hungry. Satan says, aren't you hungry? Turn that rock into bread. And then Jesus ultimately says, no, I need to do my father's will. And it's not, it, one should live by the word of God. And then ultimately he got another test. He took him up to parapet. You can jump off this and save yourself. No. And then Satan even quoted scripture. He says, well, even the angels will catch you unless you dash your foot against the stone. Uh-oh, Satan knows the word. But you've got to know what it means, amen, for yourself. Because ultimately we have to submit our wills to the Father. And lastly, again, it's not about me. It's not, Jesus it was, was like, not, it's not about me. I'm here to do the Father's will. I'm on a mission. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm on a mission. On a mission. Then the last test was ultimately another, another way Satan tried to get at Jesus, his identity. Because Jesus was the Son of God, but, and he is God, but he was here to do the Father's will. So Satan wanted his, him, him to give him the glory. Wanted, Satan wanted him to worship him. And then that's when say that's when I love what Jesus said. He says, "Get away, Satan!" Right? Or in Spanish, "Vete, Satanás!" Right? In the name of Jesus, right? In the name of Jesus, be gone, Satan! Right? Be gone. In other words, go away. And that's what authority you have as a baptized believer. You can say, "Satan, get out of my face!" Right? Satan, be gone in Jesus' name! Right? 
So we have to be willing in Jesus' name to say, God, you can guide me through my temptations. Temptations are who I am. It's just a byproduct of my experiences around me. And I'm giving Lord to go outside of my lane. In other words, stay in your lane. Amen. You've got free will, but stay in your lane. You can know when people are out of their lane. Amen. When you're at work, you can say like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people are acting crazy at work. It's not even a full minute. You can start to say that person's thinking a little bit outside of themselves. They're they're acting really a little sus, a little suspect. They're not they're not allowing themselves to do the work that God calls them to do, and therefore they're acting out. Right. So you can see that even at workplaces, you can see that in our in our communities and in in our world, people are getting killed regardless of age. People are dying regardless. There's no sense of dignity. There's no sense of, of sacredness in life. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the unborn now. But oh, how do we treat other ones? How do we respect other people who are different from ourselves? We just slaughter people left and right. Satan wanted the glory from Jesus and says, you should adore me, worship me, and I'll give you all the kingdoms. All the kingdoms. Right? Now that's a problem with that because last time I checked, Satan was a creature. God created creatures. Right? So he's like, worship me. He's like, what the... You know, shut that up, right? And here's where Jesus gives us the reminder, get away, Satan, right? Go away from here. Now, I want you to know that you can do that when you're feeling tempted. Trust and lean on the Lord. Say, Satan, get away from me right now in Jesus' name. I want you to say that with me. Ready, go. Satan, get away from me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. When you breathe that in, take a deep breath of that. You have that truth. And I just want to encourage you today, as we have marked this time of this sacred season of sacrifice, but also grace and joy and lighter loads, we can actually find ourselves being closer to God than we've ever been. We can be more free and more in tune with who we really are. So I just want to encourage you as we move forward. Yeah, there's going to be temptations. That's nothing new. That happened to God himself. We can still turn to God. And find our way out. If there's a door closed, there's a window that can be opened. Amen? Amen? Never think that your temptation is greater than God's grace. Always know there's a way through it. And God, even though the Holy Spirit led, say, led Jesus into the desert, he, Jesus could rely on the Holy Spirit. And what happened after those tests? Angels ministered to Jesus. So I just want to encourage you, never think that you can be undone if you've fallen. If you've fallen, we have the grace of reconciliation. If you've fallen, we can go back to the Word of God. If you've fallen, you can turn to Jesus in the Eucharist. Jesus wants us to know that we are always one. He knows where we may fall, but he invites us to rise back in the dignity as his sons and daughters. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'm very grateful for our God's sons and daughters whom he has called uh, to be sent today uh, to the bishop. Bishop John to the cathedral to be acknowledged as those who are entering in the fullness of the Easter sacraments, that is, baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist. So at this time, I invite Ms. Mamanita uh, Clark to come up to make the welcome uh, to present those who are our candidate, our catechumens and candidates. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Morning. Father Norman, these catechumens whom I now present to you are beginning their final period of preparation and purification leading to their initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and examples. Now they ask that they be recognized for the progress that they have made in their spiritual formation and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forth to the right of election and call to continuing conversion this afternoon with Bishop John Stowe. Those who are to be sent to the celebration of election in Christ, come forward together with those who will be your godparents. Bella Fields with Megan Reed. 
Jamie Fields with Megan Reed, Sean Fields with Megan Reed, and Ty Fields with Megan Reed. Joy Fawn with Sharon Searcy, Isaiah McKenzie with Erica, Dr. Paul Rover with Ned Benson, and Cameron Sherlock with Neil Clark. My dear friends, these catechumens who have been preparing for the sacraments of initiation hope that they will be found ready to participate in the rite of election and called to continuing conversion and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about their readiness before they are presented to the bishop. Now I turn to the, you, godparents, for your testimony about these catechumens. Have they taken their formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? They have. Have they given evidence of their conversion by the example of their lives? They have. Do you judge them to be ready to be presented to the bishop this afternoon for the right of election and call the continuing conversion? We, we do. I invite you to just make one statement about their continuing conversion. Paul Rover is, uh, is a sweet man that you don't find in the world. Um, and he's in his person every day. And uh, I thank him for as much as he's given to me in this process. Thank you, Paul. Amen. Uh, Cameron Sherlock chose me as his godmother, and I am extremely excited about that. I have seen his growth as we have come along these weeks and months. And I am so excited to in introduce everyone to Isaiah McKenzie, who comes to us from Maryland. He's a member of FEMA, and I am standing in proxy of his godmother. Amen. One thing, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I have seen Joy grow not only in chronological age and height, but in her behavior, her eagerness, and her excitement to become a Catholic be baptized. She's just working on the movement now because she's still a little wiggly. <laughs> My dear catechumens, the, this community gladly recommends you to the bishop, who, in the name of Christ, will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. This time, if you can slide to the left, <laughs> we're going to make room for our candidates. Or this one. Oh, yeah. Whichever one. <laughs> You're going to slide this down. Hey, that's the left on your side. <laughs> Facing out. Thank you. Father Norman, these candidates whom I now present to you are also beginning their final period of preparation and purification leading to their initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now, that they, now they ask that they be recognized for the progress that they have made in their spiritual formation and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they celebrate their call to continuing conversion. Those who are celebrating their continuing conversion in Christ Come forward together with those who will be your sponsors. Felix Fawn with Prisca Fawn. Dr. 
Dr. Joe Hill with Cecilia Hill. Charlie Carbo with Katie Reynolds. And Olivia Carbo with Debbie Carbo. My dear friends, these candidates and those who are representing have been preparing for the sacraments of initiation. Hope that they will be found ready to the celebrate the call of continuing to continuing conversion and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments. It is the responsibility of this community to inquire about their readiness for the call to continuing conversion. Now, I turn to the sponsors for your testimony about these candidates. Have they taken their formation in the gospel and in the Catholic way of life seriously? Have they given evidence of their conversion by the example of their lives? Yeah. Do you judge them to be ready to be presented to the bishop this afternoon for the right of election and call to continuing conversion? Yeah. I invite you to speak on their behalf and recognize them and what you have seen in their life. My dear candidates, this community recommends you to the bishop, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work he has begun in you. At this time we will have special prayers and intercessions. I think Deacon James will now help us with that. My brothers and sisters, and let's all stand together. My brothers and sisters, we look forward to the celebrating of, at Easter, the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. As we journey together to the Easter sacraments, these candidates, catechumens, and candidates will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves, that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and come together to share the joys of Easter. For Pope Francis, Bishop John, our priests, religious deacons, and leaders in the church. We pray that by their example, they lead us out of the barren desert to a renewed appreciation for the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, we pray that during this season of reflection, we can examine the direction our lives are taking us. Renewing the positive things while trying to reject whatever is leading us away from God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our, our CIA class, we pray that our catechumens preparing for baptism, Joy Fun, Paul Robert, Cameron Sherlock, Isaiah McKenzie, Bella, Jamie, Sean, and Ty Fields. And candidates prepare. Preparing for reception into the church, Felix Fon, Joe Hill, Charlie and Olivia, Olivia Carvo, that they have accepted God's invitation to lead a new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the marginalized, we pray that in our Lenten fast, we learn to share with those in need, especially the young and elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Bills, we pray for the safety of their workers as they continue with the construction on our church and sanctuary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and infirm, especially Ted Rice, Demetrius Logan, Reba Feldman, Joe Turley, Chester Kavanaugh, Ron Easterly, Mary Fogartry, Nick Brody, Janice Adams, Marilyn Shannonburg, Frank Foy, Tom Williams, John Ellery, Angie Gillis, 
Michael Dickerson, Jay Blanton, Bill Dodson, Leonard Nelson, Paul Baumgartner, Matt Wackerly, Ralph Whitehouse, Brittany Carey, Pauline Barber, Joe Coconera, Josie, and Danny Jones. We pray that they find healing and peace, but peace of mind this next season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died, especially our police, our firefighters, military, family, friends, innocent lives cut short from abortion, suicide, auto accidents, drug overdose, seasonal storms, racist acts, and gun violence. We pray that they are soon joined with God in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For everyone gathered here this morning, we pray that we do not allow ourselves to be tempted by the devil in the desert of our souls, and that we have the strength to reject what is evil and proclaim what is right. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That their godparents and sponsors may be living examples of the gospel, and we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That their teachers may always convey to them the beauty of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That these candidates and catechumens may share with others the joy they have found in their friendship with Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. That our community during this Lenten season may grow in charity and be constant in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That these can humans and candidates may be free from selfishness and learn to put others first. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Benjamin Mueller, for Beth Weissmuller, and Trenton Duper, for their healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. This time we'll offer a prayer over the CAD humans as they prepare to sign the book of the elect. If you could extend your right hand towards them. Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide these candidates and catechumens in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, you're about to set out on the road that leads to the glory of Easter. Christ will be your way, your truth, and your life. In his name, we will send you forth now from this community to celebrate with the bishop in the Lord's choice of you to be numbered among his elect. Until we meet again for the scrutinies, walk always in his peace. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, this community now sends you to reflect more deeply, but you can remain with us for the remainder of this Mass in celebration. Amen. Amen. Might you now be asleep or be able to go back to your seats as we renew our faith in the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He rose again on the third day, Number 361, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
361.
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Community Hill will be number 750, Taste and See, 750.
by Jesus to speak to you and give you a way to understand he is stronger than any of your temptations. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our prayer after communion on this first Sunday of our Lenten journey. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Please be seated as we give our welcome by Deacon Jim, the first one. Welcome to each of you who worship being with us today. And if this is your first time, would you please stand and tell us who you are and where you are from? Welcome to you and come back and worship with us anytime you're in the area. Our weekday mass schedule is Tuesday and Wednesday at 5 p.m. And on Thursday, it is at 4.30. Our CCDCYO resumes this week on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Also, during our CCD program, uh, Greg Gerton, who's in the choir here, teaches at TRAC in CCD, uh, training our altar service. So if your child is, has received first Eucharist and would like to be an altar server, please have them come to CCD this week from 6 to 7. So he's got this section set aside to help train the altar service as we go. We're sort of catching up from COVID. Our Stations of the Cross will begin this Friday at 5 p.m. here in this um, space here. And we continue to ask you to remain safe as you enter and leave church property We've got some of our parking back, but just be careful in that area. They're still cleaning up, so I won't say you might get something in your tire, but there's a possibility. <laughs> the National Cap uh, Black Catholic Congress will be held July the 20th through the 23rd at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in National Harbor, Maryland. This coming Tuesday is the last day to get um, take advantage of the early bird registration. You can still register up through. Uh, there's another time frame, but in order to save yourself some money, this Tuesday is the last day to take advantage of that. And in the back as you leave, there's some Lenten pocket pieces. I thought I had one in here. It's, a nail. it's got a nail. It's supposed to carry it in your pocket. I wouldn't advise you to carry it in your pocket. <laughs> Tear a hole in your pocket if you like me. So, but for women, you may need to put it down inside of your purse. But it's uh, it has a prayer on it along with a nail. And uh, first Saturday mass for this week is going to be at 9 a.m. Again, a reminder, um, we've been in a lot of, uh, St. Peter Clever has been featured in a lot of magazines and periodicals lately. Uh, just check out your crossroads. Uh, thank you, Nita Clark, and all those who helped uh, with her with the article. It's a really informative and inspirational article. Uh, that's in our own Crossroads Austin publication, but also in the Catholic Extension, there's a beautiful article. If there's not enough copies, then we can make some more, but these two pages in the middle, or four pages in the middle of the book, uh, 
Catholic Extension who supports Mission Diocese like ourselves and our Mission Diocese, um, they were very gracious to us. They're the ones who did the matching grant when we had the fundraiser last fall. Uh, made, we made over, with, with that fundraiser, we had 75000 so we matched it. Uh, so that was another, that was 150000 And then their uh, staff and all those who work with them, they had a Christmas bonus. They gave parts of their Christmas bonus to us, which totaled over 17000 I just want to thank Kathy Extension and this beautiful article. <laughs> so some of these will be available in the back if you're interested. Uh, also, lastly, I wanted to acknowledge our auxiliary, our court, uh, 233, uh, Jean Reen's court, and uh, Grand Lady Jakarta Ellis has some uh, great news to share with us. So she could come down and acknowledge what took place here yesterday. So let's... Uh, welcome, former Grand Lady Jakarta Ellis. As she comes forward, uh, she has been a pioneer for uh, building up our legacy of Our Lady's Auxiliary uh, in the service projects, in uh, working in the community with grade schools, with scholarships. There's been so many wonderful ways that she helped to collaborate with our with our uh, our co our. Uh, Council, I guess there's a lot of council and courts here, uh, but 233 Council, uh, Council 233 of our men's group, and it's just been a wonderful, wonderful collaboration, a lot of efforts to move service and goodness uh, in our parish and beyond. So uh, on, with her uh, leadership, I can't help but acknowledge, thank you, uh, Grand Lady, former Grand Lady uh, Dakota Ellis. <laughs> to have been the Grand Lady for over nine years uh, of the Ladies Auxiliary for January Court. But I am proud to announce the new Grand Lady, and she's got some new and exciting things coming up, and her name is Grand Lady Valerie Jenkins. Woo! Blessing if you can send your right hands towards each other. Uh, late performer Grand Lady Jacard Ellis gave her the gavel yesterday, so we thank God. So let's extend our right hand towards Valerie. Giving gracious God, you never cease to amaze us through your Son Jesus Christ. You taught us uh, that you come not to be served but to serve, and whatever we do to the least of these, you, we've done unto you. So bless uh, all of the love and leadership being passed on in the ways that you're going to call Valerie to another level. We just ask your blessings upon her, and we thank God for no weapon formed against her shall prosper as well. And we just thank you for her leadership and her yes to this organization and to our the greater gift of the God's church. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, you guys. Great to be with you. Let us continue now to pray, pray, pray for one another. Thank you, drummers. Thank you, server. Thank you, our lectors and ushers. Thank you, choir. Thank you, everyone who made this possible. Let's please stand for a final blessing. Hope to see you in this middle of the week where we have masses at 5 o'clock. Again, Station of the Cross, a lot of opportunity to continue our spiritual journey together. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for God's blessing. And we'll see you at the right of the left. May bountiful blessing, the Lord be praying, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation. Virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down now upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now before we go in peace, one second, I want to acknowledge that the Heckards have been so gracious. Michael and Alex in the back have restored our cross, brought it into an incredible way that's going to match our future church. I just want to thank them there in the back corner, Michael and Alex. This cast is ended. Let us go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Closing in will be number 376, in the name of Jesus, 376.